Bible, there are many different stories where great men and great women of God became fearful. This explains why God encourages his children to fear not 365 times in the Bible. With everything going on in the world, it is easy to become fearful. With the current state of affairs, it feels like anything can happen. And we are all walking in uncertain times. And during uncertain times, that's when the spirit of fear begins to try, drawing ever closer to us. But this is where, as a child of God, you need to draw the line and refuse to be fearful. So how do we overcome fear? We overcome fear with the word of God. The Bible contains the promises of God. Promises that I would like to leave with you to take away. These promises can provide you comfort. Comfort is definitely needed in these uncertain times that we are living in. So I invite you to take notes and keep these promises close to your heart. They are yours. Does it ever feel like you are being attacked? As if enemy after enemy is continually hurling things in your direction. It seems like it is always something. God wants you to know that even though situations may come at you and you may feel overwhelmed, you must not lose faith in God because God is in control. This verse says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. I thank God that the verse does not say that no weapons will be formed against you because that would be very disheartening because weapons and situations always seem to be coming at me. God may allow some weapons to be formed, but even though these weapons are formed, these situations transpire. But God wants to let us know that they will not successfully destroy us. So today, I am here to encourage you with this promise of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Whatever attacks the enemy has plotted against you will not defeat you. You need to make your mind up as a child of God. I will not be defeated. I will be strengthened, encouraged, motivated, redeemed, vindicated, but I will not be defeated. I have too much on the line to be defeated by the devil. Too many people are counting on me. I will not be defeated. These words reside in my heart tonight. If we are God's people and God is with us and for us, then the plots of the enemy cannot defeat us because we are redeemed by the Lord. God is bigger than any trial or tribulation in life. He has power and sovereignty over all the earth, galaxies, and universe. God is all. If we are in God, we are in all. We are one. The Lord is in control. Even if things feel out of control or simply out of our control, trust in the Lord that he is in control and has all the control. Simply give your life over to the Lord and rest assured that in uncertain times, the Lord will guide you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 4610. Have faith in God's timing. Remember, God is the God of Joel 225. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. next verse I want you to keep is, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Psalms 34, 7. If we believe in God, God will deliver us. We should not be afraid of our problems. We should not say, I wonder what this situation will do to us. But rather, we should say, I wonder what my God is going to do in this situation. God encamps with us. We have nothing to fear. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Proverbs 18.10 It is doing severe storms or even sad events in our lives 
that we are forced to come to grips with reality and must ask ourselves, where is my faith? Or where is my trust? Is my faith and trust in myself, things, other people, or the name of the Lord, whom King Solomon describes as a strong tower? Where will we run to and be safe from hurt, harm, and danger? Storms are often looked at as something bad, but it is the storms of life that is the driving force to make us answer the above question and in turn run for shelter. Sometimes God uses storms, fiery furnaces, and troubled waters to get us sailing in the direction we should have gone in prior to the storm. Believe it or not, but sometimes it takes a storm to know we are in need of a shelter. It is in the storms in life where we are reminded of our desperate need of God. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. When the storms of life comes, we need a shelter, a sure foundation called Jesus to calm our storm. Jesus is indeed our hiding place. He is described in Psalms 46, 1 as refuge or strength, a very present help in time of trouble. The spirit and mental storms which are unavoidable in all of our lives can, can be just as brutal and devastating as a physical storm. For they too are just as much a reality as a physical storm. They too causes us at times to feel fearful and hopelessness. When they begin to rage, it is in the name of the Lord that is our strong tower. It is in the place of safety which God promises to those who run to him. Those who love and trust him can run to him for safety. Today I exhort you to seek shelter in Jesus and in him alone. Seek him through prayer and his word for you will find a hiding place there. The Lord has not promised us that we would not have storms, but he has promised to be a shelter in the time of them. The storm may be raging all around us, but we are given the promise of a secret place where we can run into. In Psalm 91, 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. Isaiah 41, 10 through 12. When God says, do not fear, I don't think it is an accusation of being irrational. When God says, do not fear, there is usually something that a normal person may be fearful about. But you are not normal. You are a chosen child of God and you should not fear. So whatever your situation, no matter how much fear the situation calls for, do not be afraid. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Psalms 121, 7 through 8. This psalm has been a source of great comfort and encouragement in very difficult times in my life. I would recommend that each of you listen, read all of Psalms 121 during this time we are going through. Once the psalmist establishes where his help comes from, and now that you can be confident in the same, he describes how God shows up for 
for his people. God is always alert. Even when you sleep, God is alert and ready to battle on your behalf. You can be confident that he never takes a break, but is right there, ready to act on your behalf. God always protects you. To shade your right hand, he cannot be far off. God is with you and will protect you, whether it be in the desert or in the dark. It doesn't mean challenging things won't happen to you. But it does mean that he will watch over you and protect you. God is always with you. You can be sure that God will not walk away from you. In your comings and goings, God is with his people. You can call out to him and know that he is right there, ready to respond. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Isaiah 43, 2. These promises were being tested in their situation. There was a value in holding on to these promises. These promises are not new. So many have held on to these promises for comfort. And today, I want to leave these promises with you. Keep these promises with you. Memorize them. Teach them to your children. Tell your friends. Because no matter what happens around you, God is still the same. May these promises return you to Him.